Today's topic is about empowerment. How to stay empowered around, while you're around, sort of toxic family members during Christmas, and how to keep your power and not lose energy to fear or anger or frustration and stress. So that's a tough one for most people. Let's talk about empowerment. This is actually my favorite subject because it's a part where you get to be you. This is a part where you get to learn how to shine, right? And everyone gets to get used to who you are and make no excuses for who you are anymore. So let's talk about this. Come on and answer a couple simple questions. What is empowerment? What is that exactly? What does it mean? Because a lot of people don't even know what that means. So basically, think about it. It's got the word power in it. So that means having the energy to be powerful. So high energy level. It also means self-confidence. Having the confidence to set goals, be motivated to achieve them. So it's also about confidence. Um, it's also about being in your power. In other words, being authentic, being who you really are. You know, again, I've talked about this in my other two videos, but it still blows my mind how everybody is so different, but yet we're all trying to be cut from the same claw and be the same. And it doesn't work. As you know, you are wired to be you. So being empowered means you get to be you. And you know what? At the end of the day, it's a simple a job description because you're the only one who can fill it. You know, trying to be something other than yourself is far more difficult because you can't. You can't be anybody but, you know, I know it sounds simple, but there's so many people living in the shadows of other people. Who do you want me to be? What do you want me to be? Whatever's going to get me love, you know, I'll be it. And I remember doing that myself, you know, when I was growing up in my family and when I was even married to my ex-husband. It was all about who do you want me to be? You know, I can shape shift myself and I never dream about just being myself, that that was worthy of love. But, you know, that's so long ago and thank God for that. But I'm here to help you if you yourself find yourself stuck in that very same place. So hanging out with family, toxic family relationships, stressful. It could be very disempowering, okay? Meaning, so oh, let me go back to empowerment for a second. Finally, it also means being in control, all right? Being in control of yourself, you know, your livelihood, who you are, you know, you don't have someone else controlling you. And as you know, no one can control you unless you relinquish control to them. So people often disagree with that, but that's the truth, that you're always in control until you relinquish control to another person, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's what empowerment is. Empowerment is about restoring your self-esteem, self-worth, and having the courage to love yourself unconditionally so that you, what's the best word to say this, you feel brave enough, confident to just be yourself and live an authentic life. That's what self-empowerment is. So the next question is, how do family members disempower you, all right, especially around Christmas, because we talked about in the first part of this series, obligation. So obligation right away takes away your power. 
because you're not doing something you authentically want to do. You're back into the have tos. So have tos is more of a head decision than a heart decision. So this is disempowering, okay? Disempowering is any time that you step away from being who you are and become unauthentic. That disempowers you. It's like taking you out from the kneecaps, okay? It's uh, it's not a happy place to be, all right? And it also has to do with your emotions big time, all right? So how do they do that? Through sense of obligation, they shift you into the have tos. Have tos makes you lose your energy. And when you lose your energy, you become demotivated. And when you become demotivated, you become unhappy. All right. And when you're unhappy, you become emotionally vulnerable. And when you're emotionally vulnerable, you're very easy to control and to manipulate. All right. So again, energy vampires, negative family members or otherwise can sense that about you and they'll disempower you by making you believe what they want you to believe and think what they want you to think. So that's how they do it, all right? So it's very disingenuous. It makes you, feeling disempowered makes you feel horrible inside because you're so far away from who you are. And the further away you are from your true authentic self, the more unhappy you become, all right? And the more out of integrity you become. Now, when you step away from your personal integrity and from who you authentically are, it seems so hard to find your way back home to a place of true love and acceptance and self-worth. So you don't want people to disempower you. So what do I do at Christmas when I feel disempowered by my family? Hmm. Well, in a perfect world, I would say to you, um, yes, you're right. Somebody mentioned that you feel taken advantage of when you're vulnerable and your energy is low. People will prey on that vulnerability and surely take advantage of you. Usually people that are out of integrity or ego-based people that are self-centered they need all the energy and attention drawn to themselves. Well, pick energy and take energy from wherever they can. So that's a very good point. Absolutely. So you don't want to put yourself in that place of emotional vulnerability. Okay. So going back to my question, um, or particularly your question, what do I do at Christmas? when I'm starting to feel disempowered by family members. Okay. So the very best solution is to become empowered. All right. However, when you're in a state of negativity, which is a lower vibration of energy, and you're surrounded by a lot of toxic sort of negative people, it's very hard to feel empowered unless you've done the self work. And what I mean by that is what I'll talk about in a little while back there. Emotionally healed and evolved yourself to a place where you could feel empowered even amongst the sort of bottom feeders, for lack of a better word, um, the energetic bottom feeders. You know, you could feel empowered. It's what I call being in the muck but being above it. So how do we do that? Well, I wrote down a couple of points on how you can cope with that. So remember, this is a quick fix, all right? This is like dropping those five pounds before your vacation. You know damn well it's only fluid loss and it's going to come back. So emotional healing is the same way. There's a quick fix to get you through difficult situations, i.e. Christmas dinner with a bunch of Christmas family crazies, 
However, it's not a permanent solution. At the end of the day, you got to put some spin in the game. You got to invest in yourself. You got to invest in your emotional well being. Otherwise, the weight's going to come back on. All right. All the heaviness is going to stay on your shoulders. So, right now, I'm just here to help you get through this, you know, Christmas season with as little energy loss as possible, okay, and keeping you sane. So basically what I do when I have to be in a place that I particularly don't want to be but feel obligated to be, I set, grab your phone and set an alarm, okay. Set a timer for as long as you know you can last. So if that's an hour, set it for an hour. So that it starts beeping. You don't have to tell them what the alarm's for. This is for you. This is your safety net. It's kind of like when you go on that blind date and you ask a girlfriend to call you to rescue you from a place you particularly don't want to be. If the date's fine, you're good to go. If the date's not, you got to take it out. So this is the same idea. Set the alarm, okay? For those of you that are traveling from a distance, you could still do it. I'm sure you have a hotel room or somewhere that you can escape to if you really need to, okay? So set the alarm, all right? The other thing you can do, find the most positive, loving, cheerful, happy, laughing people in the room. Move yourself towards them. Circle yourself around that energy. All right. Stick around the positive people. You don't want to stick around the dramatic, the negative, the, the controlling people. They're sucking whatever energy you got left out of you. So get yourself out there and move towards the happiest part of the room. Hopefully, there's one or two people back and help you with that, okay? The other thing is, don't engage. Don't engage in negativity. Don't throw, throw fuel onto the fire. Don't say, oh yeah, well I heard this. Don't give them any more negativity, all right? Because if so, it's only gonna get them in rage, get them dramatic, get them insecure, and they're gonna need more energy from guess who? You. So don't engage and add more fuel to the fire. Keep the conversations as light and positive as possible. And the beautiful thing about that, when you start to laugh and you start to, you know, be positive, you start to talk about, you know, sort of positive things, um, negative people don't like that, believe it or not, because misery loves company. So they're not going to engage. They might tolerate it for a while. However, if you continue to shine the light of positivity, they're not going to like it in me. Well, you just watch. They'll slowly move away themselves. And they'll find someone else that will engage in their negativity. You don't feed the vampires. Okay. Uh, what else do I have? Also, Move around the room. Keep circulating. Perhaps uh, if you have the, um, you know, the power to do it. You don't want to be infringing on somebody's uh, privacy and walking all through their house. However, if you can escape to a bathroom for a few minutes and just, again, like the, uh, the video last week, take some deep cleansing breaths, breathing in calm, breathing out stress for your feet and allow your pressure to come down and start relaxing and getting your heart rate leveled off. Okay. Um, another thing you could do is find a positive distraction. Perhaps ask the uh, host or hostess if you could help cook or set the table or wash the dishes or Play with the children, if there are children. Children, 
have a high vibration naturally because they're very creative, naturally playful, childlike. Energy is wonderful to raise your energy up. So being around with the children is not always a bad idea. Or if there are pets in the house, pet the dog, you know, pet the cat, because you'll get energy off of them, and it'll also distract and pass the time a little bit. If none of those things work, all right, at the end of the day, and you're completely feeling overwhelmed, angry, resentful, unhappy, disempowered, control whatever you're feeling, then it's probably time to leave. Thank your host and hostess and remove yourself gracefully and with gratitude. Okay, again, always leaving with a high vibration. Do not leave angry. Do not jump in your car, flip the bird, you know, have road rage on the way home. Okay, stay in a positive frame of mind. Again, remove yourself. I've had to do that alarm thing when I've gone visit my own family, believe it or not. And when the alarm goes off, you know, you have a sense of relief if you need it, or if it goes off and you're fine, then you're good to go. But at least you're, you have something that's going to, you know, more or less save you. All right. So those are some strategies on how to not let family just through the holidays. Okay. So I hope those are helpful. Um, so what I finally want to do um, is I want to tell you basically about the best solution. Now, what I told you was a quick fix. It was sort of compared to losing five pounds without vacation. So if we're comparing weight to emotional healing. The best case scenario is to change your physical lifestyle. If you were losing weight, you would sign your self up to a gym or register to YouTube videos and get some exercise equipment, good running shoes, exercise, blah, 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 eat properly, you know, get some rest, do everything you can physically do to change your lifestyle for the better so you can take those pounds off but also maintain, okay? So emotional healing is the same thing. There are some quick fixes, like I just shared with you, on how to cope. But if you really want to maintain a healthy emotional health, then you have to do the work, okay? And realistically, this is where I usually lose some people. And that's quite normal. Because a lot of people have good intentions. They want to, to, you know, be happy, do the work to heal themselves and better their families, but they're not willing to do the work, and that's unfortunate. And I am here to tell you, there's no other way to do it, okay? You're only fooling yourself. You've got to invest in yourself to get yourself to a place of what I call emotional evolution process. You think about it in the new year. But basically, I'm going to tell you, you've got to do the work emotionally to get to that happy place, to build that place of empowerment, health, wisdom, most of, my, most of all, peace of mind. And a lot of people are talking about mental health. But I truly believe that mental health issues arise first with emotional health issues because usually we feel sad and that sadness then you know creates us thinking and processing and stepping into ego so this is why i believe that mental health issues actually start with your emotional uh, state of mind if you don't feel happy you're going to step into that you know, inner critic dialogue that goes on in your head. And that could take up a ton of energy, and that could also keep you up at night and allow these sort of people to
to come into your life and dictate, you know, who you should be and your happiness or unhappiness. So I've created a solution, which I think is going to help you. Um, I know it's helped me. And it's taken me 15 years to come up with this solution through my own experiences, through the experiences of my clients, their testimonials, right? Um, so this is how I've handcrafted, speakingly. Um, but I believe, I know that it's going to help you, okay? So basically there are four stages to this, right? Stage one is what I call emotional awareness. You can't fix something you know nothing of. So you have to get in touch with the root cause of what's causing you to be afraid, to hold on to fear, to hold on to emotional pain, and what's making you unhappy. So we got to sort of blow that out of the water, and we have to look at um, awareness. Like, so we examine that in the first uh, stage, you know, bringing you to a place of understanding. It's kind of like going to the doctor. You have a problem. You have a problem. Nobody seems to know what it is. Doctor doesn't know. And it's so frustrating as hell when you don't know what it is. And when you do know what it is, even though you haven't fixed it yet, you feel relieved because somebody is hearing you. Somebody knows what your pain is and is helping you identify it. That's what I'll help you do in the first phase of six months. Okay, so that's phase one, emotional awareness. Be very excited, okay? And then we're gonna move you to stage two, which is emotional freedom. This is where you do the work of actually releasing the anger, the fear, the pain, and all the negative emotions that you've been holding on to that are keeping you from being empowered, from being who you truly are, all right? So that is amazing. The freedom to just release and acknowledge those negative emotions. I can't tell you how amazing that feels to just be accepted and be acknowledged. So you're gonna love that stage as well. Okay, yes, we're in the muck and we're digging things up, but that's the only way to get through stuff. You can't, you know, you can't jump forward and skip all that stuff. I think I use the analogy of, you know, childbirth for all the ladies out there that have children. You can't just skip over and get the baby. You got to go through the labor, through the pain in order to get the prize. So emotional healing is a same thing. You can't keep suppressing the feelings and then go, I'm fine, I'm happy. No, you're not. That's bullshit. Because it's not true and it's not, it's not authentic. You have to deal with the emotions, period. And if you're not willing to do it, then I can't help you. In fact, nobody can. So let's stop doing that. Let's do it together. Okay, so after you've dealt with those emotions, we've released them, we're free. Here's the good part. You get to get all your energy back to all those emotions that you were carrying. All that energy comes back to you. And guess what? That moves you to stage three, which is emotional empowerment. Here is where you claim your power. You're back in control. You get to restore your self-esteem, your self-confidence, your self-worth, because you learn unconditional self-love. I will teach you what that is. So many people, including myself back in the day, did not know what unconditional self-love is. Okay? We know what conditional love is. Again, what do you want me to be to get love? No, no more. In stage three, emotional empowerment, you're going to learn to love yourself, bottom line, okay? So again, 
You can't love anybody else until you learn how to love yourself, period. All right? So that's why that stage is in there. You're going to feel empowered. Oh, my God. It's going to be amazing. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Finally, when you've reached emotional empowerment, okay, and you know how to love yourself, we move you into stage four, which is consciousness. All right? You learn emotional enlightenment. Here you get to reveal who you authentically are. You get to tell the world, here I am, deal with it. Okay? So you get to be yourself, practice conscious living. This is where you awaken your senses and you learn to open up a sixth sense. I call myself an intuitive. We're all intuitive. You're intuitive as well. That gut feeling you have that you've probably learned to shut down because people might think you're weird or you don't trust it. Well, in phase four, I'm going to teach you how to start living through that, how to trust it. And believe me, your life is going to become so much easier and far more peaceful. Okay, that's how you really, you, sorry, that's how you get to a place of peace of mind. You know, I can't tell you how many people I hear that aren't sleeping, their their mind is overactive, they're not eating well. Like, it's crazy what's going on there. I could tell you, and my, my husband can contest to it as well, I don't lose an ounce of sleep, ever. I could be in the most stressful time in my life and I don't lose sleep, okay? And that's because of emotional enlightenment. I've learned the art of peace and I'm gonna show you how to do that as well, okay? Now, don't mistake that for floating around on a cloud, you know, and letting people again take advantage of you or think you're some sort of a fruit loop because you're an enlightened, conscious person. In fact, it's quite opposite. Enlightened people are very wise. They pick up on details that unconscious people never do. So that sort of gives them um, you know, an advantage where they're always sort of one step ahead of the game because their eyes are wide open they're listening, right? They speak respectfully. So they move further in life than those that are unconscious. So there you go. That's what's coming to you. And I hope that you are just as excited as I am because we're going to have a hell of a lot of fun doing this together. Okay. So please stay hopeful, stay in touch download the checklist, all right? And I'll see you in January. Promise to be there. In the meantime, feel free to reach out. From my family to yours, from my heart to yours, God bless you and have a very Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year. Set your goals. All right, see you there. Bye now.